guys, welcome back. Um, I've got a bit of a problem. Anyone who knows this channel uh, probably knows what the problem is. Uh, I just put in a huge order for more trees. Um, so yeah, I got to figure out where they're going. Um, I kind of do that. I, I I don't know. I just I don't know why I do that. I I, I need to stop buying trees, but um, I just I I want to plant more. I want I want this whole area to be full and a forest. Um, and I I think I can squeeze more in. I need to find some places to expand the food forest. And uh, this video is going to talk about that. So um, let's just uh, let's just get into it. You can kind of come around, walk with me during my lunch, and. Um, see how I think about where I'm going to expand my food forest and my gardens and then you can kind of look forward to it in the summertime or spring. I got to find a place to put all these trees. I spent, like do I want to say? I don't know if I want to say. Okay, I spent a lot of money on trees. Look, I got a problem and I know I got a problem. That's like step one or something, isn't it? Okay, so one big priority is going to be to fill out these uh, road guilds so that I can basically have, a, you know, a walking tunnel between two meandering um, swales. And uh, I've planted a ton of stuff into those strips. I'm going to watch how they develop this year. Um, if there's any open spaces, I want to kind of fill those in. So I'll, I'll be making note of that. But then what I really want to do is I want to connect those into this main area here. And I want to plant this out um, into like another offset staggering strip. So that it's not two strips of trees. It'll kind of close the sight lines off a little more. And uh, when you're walking inside that, it'll feel like you're more in a jungle. That'll kind of happen naturally because I've got some bushes like elderberry that get to be 10 feet tall. Um, it's hard for me to see where I'm pointing. Um, just to the right of this or to the left of the service berry, that's for example an elderberry bush. It's around four feet tall, uh, five feet tall now, and it can be up to 10 to 12 feet tall. So stuff like that will get really big. The currants will get about four feet tall, they'll get bigger. Um, and then the trees will kind of, you know, get busher, but, you know, I really should have more trees, you know, in here, in between them. Now, it's been a conscious choice to not put too much trees in here, um, because that's kind of where my wife, um, you know, tells me to just cool it a bit on the front lawn, the, the wild and crazy look. I do want to kind of maybe squeeze a couple a couple extra in there, even if it's just something small that we'll take over later, like some of the peach um, seedlings that I put in at the bottom, maybe move some out so that down the road um, they'll kind of grow and fill in the area. I have a couple service berries in there as well, so I'll kind of monitor how that is. But I want to thicken these up. I want to get away from a skinny strip and more into, you know, a wider, thicker strip. Now, also, these drip edge guilds kind of end there at the pair that Lucy's checking out right now. Um, and this flowering dogwood. And then uh, we got some oaks and stuff planted on the back there. But I wanted to keep this open so that if I ever need to get the truck back in there, I could. Um, I don't think I need to, though. So what I want to do now, actually, is I want to kind of connect this all together. And I might do a food for a strip right here where I can walk underneath this maple and have a food forest strip around and then connect it into the has cap and uh, peach over there. And this is a great sunspot. Um, south is basically this way. Um, so this is a nice, great sunspot on this side, on the south side of the big maple. And maybe um, it dries out a bit so we can put some kind of drier, tolerant plants. Like how I really wanted to target jujubes and medlars. Uh, for this year to get some cool in there. I don't know if I'll be able to do that because everything's out of sale or out of stock So um, I might do like a nut like a pecan a cold hardy pecan 
thing there because they can get really big, but they're on the north side of these food forest strips. So they'll only shade out stuff behind them, which is just kind of like the maples and, you know, um, the oaks back there. So I think putting in like some nice tall um, non-juglands nut trees in this area might be really nice. And maybe I'll turn it into like a nut alleyway with uh, hazelnuts as the, as the bush layer. And then I can pull out service berries and stuff like that as nitrogen fixing bushes as well. I've got the strawberries that'll creep over in there. And I can kind of make like a nice little walking area. Maybe put a table, sit there next to the kiwis on the trellis, the strawberries. I don't know kind of mess around with it but this is a nice little dry area and putting a bed on contour there will kind of capture any of the water that wants to run this way and it'll kind of trap it and soak it in there so that it doesn't continue running um, and then down around these uh, peach trees down here which is kind of it can be a bit of a floody area so I did want to get something to kind of capture and hold some of that water soak up some of it so that I get less flooding and more spread diverse soaking. Now the true ideal for me for this whole spot would be to take over the grass. The general slope is down this way. So I would love to put food forest strips coming off of these new things right on contour and take over right up to the front door. But I'm never going to be able to do that. I don't know why I keep mentioning it. But I just keep dreaming of that when I'm out here. Turning this whole entire area into a giant closed in forest that eventually the trees will get up i keep saying to my wife eventually the trees will get up and then you'll be able to see through the forest and it won't seem like you closed in everything you know you'll be able to see through it if you design it properly but yeah maybe that'll never happen but that's what i want to do here okay so now we are next day in the morning i'm going to do some quick little sun updates of these areas you can see the house shades out part of the garden here in the morning but just north of that even in the late midwinter um, this whole area here gets morning sun as well which is fantastic okay so another area i want to develop a little more i hope you guys are enjoying this video um, the idea is that you know in the next in the next year when you're watching the channel you can see how much of this stuff i actually got done and uh you know you'll kind of have things to look forward to um, we're at lunchtime, so this is a great example of getting out and observing your land and seeing where the sun is. So this whole area gets morning sun, then straight south is that way. So right at lunchtime, um, everything here is shaded, but it will get some evening sun. So this is a decent spot actually that I haven't planted out because of the shade. You know, other than, say, this Linden Guild here with the blackberries and the raspberries, blueberries, hascaps. That's kind of what's going on in there. Um, but I thought I would like to kind of pull this out, swale this out right over. And then this elevation, interestingly enough, connects to a swale way down there where I have a uh, um, an apple and a bart nut planted out. So I could you know, uh, have this as an interswale area. I could build some of this up as a swale, um, just a very minor one, because this whole bed is kind of raised with wood chips. So just a very slight minor swale, right across here to capture everything. And then take that right across the hill, take out some of the sumacs and plant into it, and connect it over to the apple swale. And then this whole entire area, you know, would capture all the rainwater and I could even kind of use it to take water from this side of the property all the way over to the other side um, if I wanted to, if I did this properly. So I think I'd like to plant some of this out. And again, I want to focus on adding more nut trees as well. And now we come down to this linden. Um, so in this linden guild here, again, this is the morning, uh, the next day, about eight o'clock in the morning. And uh, this whole area is getting morning sun. Um, except when you get a little bit too close to those cedars. I guess some of these top cedars are still in line with that sun and they get a little bit shade further down the side there. So that's good to know. Um, it'll be less it'll be less shade in the uh, summertime, but um, we'll probably still get some. That shadow will just be cut in half maybe. You know, so maybe back here you'll still get a lot of sun, but um, this whole area in general you can see where i was walking yesterday 
or the other day anyways kind of walking out that swale line um, this whole area is pretty good sun in the morning it just really gets shaded in the afternoon by these cedars hey baby hi what's up okay so here we are down at the other end and I'll just show you what swale I'm connecting into um, it's so we're at the pond, top of that pond hill. There's Wildflower Hill down there. And it's this whale here with a service berry. Um, got a bark nut tree, some sumacs. We've got apple, drew some artichokes. And this is a swale um, that I can connect all the way through to that back end. And then I was thinking going down further, I have another swale down here with this plum. And I didn't take it across very far because um, it gets into shade pretty quick. I did some um, I did some sunflowers on it. We've got a service berry tree here. We've got a plum, and I could take this swale kind of right through if I cut some of these cedars back up. Now, um, the closer I get into the cedars, I'm going to have issues with you know cedar soil. And I'm going to have issues with sun because that's south of it. Um, but I can still get a swale in there to do the earthworks to kind of transfer, you know, water from one side up to the other and kind of store and hold it. Um, because it's on a fairly steep slope, I want to say maybe 20 degree slope, um, swales aren't necessarily the best option for, you know, super steep because they end up being uh, fairly thin. And, you know, if you want to make them wider, you start cutting back down, you know, cutting into the hill and then you have this big retaining wall issue. So typically on a fairly steep area, you're better off kind of doing terraces and a very micro raised bed. Tilt the terraces back a little bit towards the hill and you kind of want to do it like that. Not necessarily a swale that's going to hold water for a super long time in a small place, but more of a wider terrace that's going to hold water across the whole entire terrace just to help with infiltration a bit. So I might do something like that here. It'll be a lot of work. So that might be something I chip away at over, um, over the you know, next couple years even. And then we've got the old man walking trail down there. Now I think what I'm gonna do is leave that sitting for a whole year. I might add the odd plant in there, the odd pawpaw maybe, um, some jugland species we'll turn that into a juglands guild down there because pawpaws do well with it we've got rose of ragosa down there that does well with juglands we've got black cap raspberry that does well um, so we've already got the makings of a really solid resilient juglands guild we'll probably expand on that and um, i might add more pawpaws i've already ordered six more pawpaws i kind of am addicted to pawpaws even though i've never had one yet um, but i love the aesthetics of them and uh, we might kind of try to bring some pawpaws up here so they'll cross pollinate with the pawpaws behind me. Uh, I'll spin slowly. Uh, there's three pawpaws at the top of the waterfalls there. So maybe we'll put, you know, a pawpaw somewhere in this guild, you know, maybe one in this um, plum guild, maybe one somewhere on Wildflower Hill, just to kind of connect the dots and get the pawpaws all pollinating each other. Um, but I think for the most part planting out wildflower hill we're, we're gonna get a lot of volunteer um, oaks and chestnut and um, uh, Walnut and maple and we'll kind of see what we get as volunteers coming up It's gonna take another solid year for the leaves to break down So we might save that as a project to fully plant out maybe for 2022 So you can see uh, morning shade down there in the old man walking trail section it's very very shady very shady so that's why i'd put pawpaws down there currants shade loving plants and it's hard to shoot these videos i've got to keep watching and keep my eye on this little craziness um, that is eating sticks and twigs and wood chips and everything so I got to make sure she doesn't eat too much because I don't want her to get splinters. She is in a very bitey phase of her life right now. She's wonderful though. Really, really, really love that dog already. It's crazy. There she comes! <laughs> oh. 
Be nice. Be nice. Okay, okay. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Sue me. No. no, Lucy. Lucy, no. No. Lucy, no. No. Lucy, no. No. Lucy, no. You're nuts. You're nuts. Come here. <laughs> Lucy. You see her getting bent? Yeah. She has like an hour a day where she just turns into a complete nut That's bag. That's what they said. And they called them like the zoomies and they'd run around the like yeah. area. And... and then we've got the rest of the backyard. Um, so we're moving our veggie garden back there this year. And we've got uh, a nice kind of swirl extending out with a garden patch here. We'll probably do more annuals back in here. What's that? Is that a deer? I saw something moving. Oh, it's way smaller than a deer, and it's Ginny. So Ginny's down in there. So this is another reason why I don't have very many deer. Is because I've got Ginny walking around in there all the time. Keeping, you know, deer afraid. She's kind of fearless. Almost too much so, because there are other things out there. Uh, but what was I saying? We've got uh, we've got a couple swales here that I'd like to expand, fill in. You can see based on the sun in the midday, these get shaded out by the cedar south of them um, in the midday. Um, but they get pretty good sun other than that, especially when you get a little higher. So I think I'd like to kind of wrap this in and use some of this part of the hill here and tie it into this deck. So you can kind of walk off this deck into a tree tunnel. I mean, that's what I would like. I'd like to put in, thicken this up and have it come right across and connect into the house here. And then, uh, and then connect this one in so you kind of step off this deck and you're right into a little food forest strip. That would be pretty sweet, I think. Lots to do, man. There's always lots to do. Um, we've got our septic bed, which is right here. So the dig out is right around there and the leech field is all down back in here. So I just have to be careful how many trees I plant too close to the leech field in case I ever have to dig that up. That would be a nightmare job with a bunch of tree roots in the way. So I do have to keep this area a little bit open and clear, which kind of is good because my wife wants me to have like a little grassy area for kids and grandkids to play soccer. So we'll, we'll definitely respect that very, very much so in this area uh, backyard morning shade aspect so you can see for the most part you get most i'm getting mostly sun the hugel culture bed on contour the hugel hugel swale you know with no catchment area but uh anyway the hugel swale is a little shaded out um, but really that's about it the lower swales down there um, are shaded out by this big giant uh eastern white pine everything else has got pretty good sun and that'll only get those short those shadows will only get smaller in the summertime as the sun gets up in the sky but this whole area also is very very high quality sun again right until about midday but even midday some of the upper swell gets good sun the lower swell gets blocked by these cedars um, and then in the afternoon sun, the sun's coming right through here and it's full sun again. So a really good spot to expand. Um, it's eight o'clock again and uh, it's interesting that you know just a little bit on this side on the uh, west side of the house actually is getting 
son from as early as probably seven o'clock, you know, uh, seven thirty in the morning, even in the winter time with the long shadows. So that's kind of good to know that if I did expand this lower swale all the way over, it's actually going to be in sun for quite a bit in the morning. It'll get a little more afternoon shade because it's closer to the cedars. Um, and it'll get later afternoon shade because the sun's going to have to come farther behind the cedars until it gets sun again in the afternoon. But uh, right now in the morning, it's going to get quite a bit of morning sun, almost full sun from 8 o'clock, probably until about, probably till about 11 o'clock. Okay, so these are just some of the things that you could be looking out for when you're planning your next gardens, when you're planning a brand new garden. Um, make sure that you get out there morning, afternoon, and also at night to see where your sun is. And then if you can, make sure you're out there often when the snow is melting. Find out where pooling is happening. Find out where you may have drainage issues. It's a really good opportunity to... Um, to design where you're going to put swales, maybe ponds in the future, maybe where you need some earthworks before planting. Um, and at least you know where, uh, you know, wet, damp areas are going to be. You can put stuff like elderberries in that area, things that love the water. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Lucy, if you eat my pawpaws, you're in trouble. Hey, get out of there. You're going you're gonna to tumble down that hill. You're so clumsy. All right, I'm going to go get her in. Oh, she's looking for somewhere to go to the bathroom. Good girl. Right next to the pawpaw. There you go. All right, so you can see I, uh, I scooped up the dog poop right there. Um, I just wanted to make a quick little addition here on dog poop in your gardens. Dog poop shouldn't go straight into gardens because it could have parasites and worms and um, nasty uh, stuff in there. So you want to ideally, oh, something ran down there. I don't know if you guys caught it. Probably just a, oh, there it is, bunny. So um, you want to put it in a compost pile um, by itself for probably about a year if you can so it's all about time um, mix it with carbon wood chips that kind of thing leaves uh, the other option would be to get it super hot super quick so that means putting it into a very hot compost pile that's you know you can measure the temperature right in the center of it and you want to kill all that all the pathogens uh, you can make biochar out of it as well but I think the best method is just time so you know, put it in a pile somewhere by itself, maybe in a hole, cover it up with leaves, mix it in with, you know, cardboard, uh, carbon, um, wood chips, sawdust, something like that, wood shavings. Uh, the other thing you can do is if, you know, you have non-herbaceous layer edibles, then you can put it right at the base of a tree, for example, um, where you're not going to be stepping in it. Um, that's totally fine. The pathogens won't, you know, get up through the tree into the fruit. It's more of an issue of if you're going to grow root crops or lettuces, that kind of stuff. It shouldn't go into a garden like that where you're going to immediately eat the stuff. You know, next to my bark nut tree is where this one ended up, you know, kind of in the back where I'm not going to step on it. And it will just turn to soil uh, over the next year. And that is also fine. So that's how what you do with your um, dog poop cat poop um, and cat pee is a little different there's toxoplasmosis that you have to worry about and um, th that I would recommend just getting rid of so anyways that's for dog poop in your garden so for example we've got some ornamentals here and I'll slide it under right down under there and it'll just spend its next couple years there more bushes um, that we're not going to eat so we slide it in, in under there this is all wood chip covered it doesn't smell at all so that's pretty much it that's my plans for this year i think that's more than enough to t try to tackle um you know at the same time as doing consultation jobs um i am going to kind of try to cut back on the consultation jobs a little bit as spring approaches uh, because I want to focus my effort onto planting the crap out of this property. I've done so much in five years and I can do so much more. This video was just one lunch ramblings about ideas and I haven't even talked about stuff I want to do in that lower area 
And the thing is, is once you put something in place, now you have all these ideas that you connect onto it and design around it. So the planting begets more planting. At least that's what I found. The more I plant, the more I have ideas of what I want to expand and plant more on. It's kind of why this pond exists in the first place, actually. So thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Hope this video kind of gave some insight on things that maybe you can look forward to and hold me accountable if I don't get them done. Put pressure on me to get out there and keep planting. See you guys later.